Hello, welcome to the Burlington School District's presentation on Welcome to Kindergarten. My name is Stacy Curtis. I'm the Director of Early Education for the Burlington School District. Here is my contact information. Please reach out if you have any questions after this presentation. In a normal year, I and a few other district staff and teachers would offer kindergarten information sessions throughout the school district. This is where you could hear from kindergarten teachers, talk to our after school team, connect with me as the preschool director, and ask general registration questions. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, this year we are offering this presentation and others virtually. In February, each of our schools will also be holding virtual town halls so you can learn more information about that particular school. Things we're going to cover with this presentation. We're going to talk about a day in the life of a kindergartner. We're gonna talk about after school options, transportation, age requirements, early entrance, and how to register, Power School versus eCollect. Victor Prusak is gonna take over from here and I'll let Victor introduce himself. Thank you, Stacy. Welcome everybody. My name is Victor Prusak. I am the coordinator of engagement and of K-8 registration and enrollment for the Burlington School District. While I wish we could be in person, having these presentations and conversations with you, I do think that this is a great resource to have to help you choose which is the best kindergarten um, for your child. The Burlington School District has school choice for elementary schools. So anyone who lives in Burlington can choose to send their children to any of these as long as there is space. This presentation will address what is shared by all schools, regardless of which one your child ends up attending. There are town halls happening on Zoom for each elementary school during the month of February. And as each one happens, they will be recorded and then posted on our district website on each school's website and on the district's YouTube channel. I'm going to discuss a few of the registration nuts and bolts over the next few slides and then come back to more details about registration near the end of the presentation. Number one, students must be five years old on or before September 1st, 2021 in order to be eligible for kindergarten. We do have an early entrance process for students who turn five during the month of September between the 2nd and 30th. Those are eligible to apply for early entrance to kindergarten and we will have a link to that process on this presentation and it can be found at our district website. Registration is done on our website. There is no paper registration. There are lots of ways that you can access this from a tablet, from a desktop, from a laptop computer. If you do not have access to any of those, please contact either the main office or contact the school that you think at this point you would like your student to enroll in and we will figure out a solution for you. In a nutshell, if you're new to the district and your incoming kindergartner is not already enrolled in one of our pre-K programs, our partner programs, you go to the district website, Go to students and families, school registration, and click on the link that says register a student new to BSD. If your child already is enrolled in a pre-K program, you need to go into your PowerSchool account and complete the forms labeled pre-K registration for kindergarten. Start with the first form and follow the steps as prompted. Some of the things preschool prepares children for kindergarten are how to be a member of the classroom, large and small group instruction, sharing skills, friendship skills, independence and self-help, transitioning, early literacy and math skills, as well as fine and gross motor. It's important to recognize kindergarten readiness for what it is. We meet students where they are. Teachers like children in their classroom to be able to show independence, self-help skills, strong social emotional skills, and body awareness. Some myths that you might've heard about kindergarten readiness are that all children need to know how to write their name or know their ABCs, and children must be potty trained or tie their shoes. These are definitely not true. In general, this is a typical schedule for a kindergartner in our district. School starts at 810 and ends at 250. 
We have early dismissal on Wednesdays for teacher professional development, and that ends at 1.50 for a school day. We do provide snack, breakfast, and lunch. We have a hot lunch program. We also have an after school program at each of our schools. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and right now, and what we have been doing is that the first three days are half days for our kindergarten students, um, and we do provide lunch. Um, we look at doing um, assessments and potentially home visiting um, so that we can support children learning in the home and the whole parent-child communication. Um, we, at this point, do not have a solidified orientation day, but we are looking for an orientation for schools in May when the weather's nice and we can be outside. Um, and we will talk a little bit about transportation as we move forward. Each day we start in kindergarten with what we call the morning meeting. Um, some of our classrooms use what we call responsive classroom or other techniques to help support community building. The purpose of the morning meeting is really to get us together and share, do a greeting, um, have some announcements and do some activities. This is also often a time where we are incorporating some of our restorative practices during our morning meeting check-ins. Now we're going to talk a little bit about literacy components in the Burlington School District. One component of our literacy in kindergarten is our reader's workshop. This is important and fun because it allows kids to follow along in small groups with a guided reading book. So teachers will work with children in small groups on where they're at in their just right reading. And as the year progresses, children get to choose those books and they have their own little box for their just right reading. This is also an opportunity to look at different strategies, such as looking at pictures, sounding out words, and we know that children do this best when they're in the, the right group with their peers. Writer's Workshop is an opportunity for children to use inventive spelling and write their own stories. Children will have their own folders and they'll write daily to create stories and nonfiction texts. Some of this you can see here is some examples um, as they progress through the year. As you can imagine, this is um, a fun time of the day where kids can get creative. Some children will be at different levels. Some might be starting with drawing a picture and just having the teacher help them sound out one word and others may be writing sentences. For many kindergartners, the shared read aloud is their favorite part of the day. This happens daily and is part of a shared reading experience. It allows to build a shared vocabulary and allows teachers to answer and children to um, ask and answer questions as well. Word study is part of our phonics program and allows children to use inventive spelling. Our classrooms are using the Jolly Phonics program. Some also continue to use our Foundations program. This is an opportunity to work on vocabulary and handwriting as part of our daily word study. Many of our kindergarten classrooms participate in partner buddy reading with older grades within our school. This typically starts after routines have been established once we've been in school for four to six weeks. It's a great experience for older children to come back and help younger children learn and children of all ages enjoy it. The kindergartners really get attached to their reading buddies and it's a shared experience that's great. Choice time is also a favorite for many kindergartners. This is the time of day where children will have a choice to participate in play-based activities within the classroom. Some of those might include dramatic play, building with Legos or blocks, painting, sensory experiences such as Play-Doh or water play, cars, trains, and puzzles and games. As you can imagine, this is a very fun part of our day and children have some autonomy in choosing what they'd like to do. Eureka Math is our kindergarten math program. This involves workstations or places around the room where children can work in different areas. We have the number corner, we'll do whole class lessons, and then there's problem solving stations set up around the room. Children generally enjoy this part of the day because again, they're moving throughout different pieces of math and exploring with their hands. Here is an example of a math application problem that kindergartners will have this year. In this problem, you can see that we are practicing reading for understanding. It's a word problem, so we're asking some questions. And then we're asking children to draw a picture and show us how they got their answer. This is something we will do together, and then children will become more proficient throughout the year. Here is another example from Eureka Math. This is an example that's later in the year when we see students being able to take their own work and then share and discuss it with a friend. This is an opportunity to learn from each other. Thank you again, Stacy. It's Victor here. I'm gonna talk about lunch, recess, 
social studies and science, outdoor learning, and our unified arts program. The Burlington School District is fortunate to have a wonderful food program. We serve breakfast, lunch, and snack at all schools. We do ask that families complete the free and reduced lunch form every year, regardless of whether or not they think they qualify. Meals are incredibly nutritious. Students have salad bars to choose from. There's fresh fruit every day. There's milk. And there's always dietary alternatives in cases of allergies or their food preferences. Kindergarten students start the year either eating lunch in their classroom or with only our kindergarten classes to teach them the routines of getting their lunch, sitting at the table, opening their milk, and even just making it from the salad bar to their seat without dropping everything on the floor, which believe it or not really does happen. In addition to the option of having a school lunch, students may of course bring their own lunches and snacks from home to eat in school. Either before or after lunch every day, all students have recess in our elementary schools. It's at least once a day for 20 to 30 minutes and often twice a day. We go outside in all conditions unless there's really heavy rain, so please send them with the right clothing. Obviously, it's helpful if students already know how to put on their jackets and put on their gloves and put on their boots, but we also recognize that's something that we need to be teaching and reinforcing with our students. We go outside unless it's under zero degrees Fahrenheit with the wind chill. In addition to the core academic subjects of literacy and mathematics, we do have science and social studies. In some schools, it happens every day. Some schools, it doesn't happen every day, but the amount of time may be longer on those days. This is often integrated combined, sometimes taught separately. The five main areas of focus in kindergarten are living and non-living, the five senses, weather, motion, and community helpers. On the topic of community helpers, for example, we start with our classroom. That's new to many of these students, and so we start there and we slowly expand out into the school community. So they may meet the person who works in the cafeteria, they'll meet the custodian, the folks who work in the front office. Over time, the sense of their community expands. We may have the mail carrier come into the classroom or they'll meet that person outside. In some cases, we've had students um, meet the bus drivers for Green Mountain Transit and even get to ride the bus together as a class. In addition to recess, we have outdoor learning connected to academics in all of our schools to different degrees. All of our schools have been expanding their focus on connecting learning to the outdoors over the past several years. Without going into too much detail of which school does what with outdoor learning, this includes kindergarten students having an outdoor classroom right outside their classroom door and going out there almost every day, students connecting academics with the woods on their school grounds, connecting learning with extensive community gardens, and creating rain gardens while studying the impacts of rain water runoff or tracking animal tracks in fresh snow. Our district has a really strong unified arts or specials program. This includes PE twice a week, music once or twice a week, art once or twice a week, library media center work, and work with our school counselors as well around guidance related issues connected to social emotional learning. Now I'm gonna turn things over to one of our principals from Champlain Elementary School. Take it away, Joe. Hello friends, my name is Joe Restigini and I am the principal at Champlain Elementary School. I'm here to talk to you today about building school climate and culture. At Burlington Schools, we believe in a positive environment with a foundation of relationships with trusted adults throughout the building that includes all staff, from custodial staff to kitchen staff to your classroom teachers and paraeducators, a school climate that is fostering positive energy and strong relationships leads to greater success in academics for all students. And when talking about building school climate and culture, Burlington Public Schools use a couple different foundational programs to help foster this throughout all of our classrooms. One is positive behavior intervention systems. And this program in particular uses a token economy 
and incentive-based rewards to increase a behavior positive experience for all students. The other, which works in correspondence with PBIS, is restorative practices. And restorative practices is a way that builds community by a fundamental circle, conversational, community building activity that happens in all K through five classrooms. Social emotional learning in the Burlington Public Schools at the elementary level is as foundational to our teaching and learning experience as is reading and math. We believe that if students are successful in their social emotional experiences, that they'd be more able to access and engage with their academic curriculum. Thanks, Joe. Now we're gonna to shift to after school. I'd like to welcome Mandy Harris. Hi, my name is Mandy Harris and I'm the lead site director for the Burlington Kids After School Program, which runs at five of the elementary schools, Champlain Elementary, C.P. Smith Elementary, Edmonds Elementary, Flynn, and the Sustainability Academy. The after school program runs every day that school is in session and we run from school dismissal until 5.30 every day. So on those Wednesday early dismissals, we pick the students up at 1.50 versus 2.50 and we get an extra hour of after school with them. The cost of the program is 15.50 per child per day. We do work with the state um, to help families who qualify for state subsidy. And we also do have a sliding scale discount for qualifying families. Every day the students are served a supper which is through food services, similar to the school day lunch. And there's also a healthy take-home snack at the end of the day. Families interested in registering will receive some instructions uh, to register through PowerSchool with your school placement letter. And we do give priority to current after-school families, and we encourage everyone to apply as soon as possible. Space does fill up for Ks often. If uh, school does fill up, we do have wait lists that will start um, if necessary. The Integrated Arts Academy has a program that is run by the Boys and Girls Club, so they do have a different registration process. So if you're interested in being part of after school at IAA, I would recommend that you reach out to the Boys and Girls Club. And there are other options around town. Uh, Sarah Holbrook Center does run an after school program as well as King Street and the YMCA. All of our after-school sites are licensed child care programs, so we do meet some stringent standards regarding to staff to student ratios, staff training, and program safety. We have a wide variety of different types of staff members. We have different types of community members, teachers, paraeducators, and local college students, and our staff receive 20 or more hours of professional development every year. We have really great teams at each of our sites. As far as a daily schedule, students get picked up at their classroom every day at school dismissal, and generally they go outside for a little bit of time, uh, recess time outside, and then they'll come in and they'll have that supper that we spoke about earlier. And then they'll come inside and they'll have their activity block, which is kind of the first portion of their activity day. And this might range. Um, so it might be an art or music activity one day. It could be a science activity. It could be cooking. Um, or it could be something that has to do with movement, and often that will change day to day for students so that everyone kind of gets something they're interested in throughout the week. An example that we love to do during the fall would be to sit down and do a read aloud about apple picking, and students would get to taste a whole bunch of different types of apples, and then they would survey to see which one was the favorite, and they would talk about numbers and favorites and, you know, graphs and that sort of thing. So we have a really big range of different activities that our staff will do with the students. The last portion of the day is generally free choice activities. So the staff will set up some stations. Examples would be coloring, Legos, or Play-Doh. And students get to choose the activity that they're interested in and go to a table and do that activity in a small group. And that's kind of what they do for the rest of the day waiting for their pickup. If you have any additional questions about after school, please feel free to reach out to me or the site director at the school that you are interested in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mandy. Mandy's contact info, along with that of all the schools, will be at the end of this presentation. I'm going to talk about transportation and some other topics that I think will be of interest to you. There are different ways that students can get to and from school. The most common is walking or biking. We also, of course, welcome you to bring your student to or from by car. We have a great public bus system here through Green Mountain Transit. 
It's free for any K-5 student who lives at least 0.7 miles from their school. In middle school, that bumps up to one mile from school and you get a free pass to get on the buses. We also do have a district school bus, but that is restricted to students who are receiving special education services only and only those where that's written into their IEP. Just because you may have been receiving school bus transportation for your preschooler to come to one of our preschools does not automatically mean that you're eligible to ride or district school bus for kindergarten. You may check with your child's teacher or special educator for clarity around that. And lastly, we do have some district yellow buses that we lease out from Mountain Transit. They are operated by their drivers. Um, again, you must live at least 0.7 miles from your school. It does not stop door to door. Bus in the morning that starts down in the south end and essentially stops school to school. So it starts its run pretty early in the morning by little after seven o'clock and ends up all the way in the new north end at Flint Elementary in time for school to start before 8.10. We also have a bus going the opposite direction. So it starts at Flint Elementary a little after seven and eventually makes its way down to each school and gets to Champlain Elementary before the start of the school day there. In the afternoon, those buses reverse directions. We realize that's a lot of information that we've thrown at you. And so I'm going to summarize some key registration dates, share some links, um, and some slides about questions that you may have. Important deadline is March 15th. We've moved that from the end of February, recognizing that doing this in a COVID period where we can't give in-person support, um, we need to extend our deadline. By the middle of April, I will contact any families who cannot receive their first choice of schools. In a nutshell, the way that process works is if we have room in the school for everybody who chooses that school for kindergarten as their first choice, then everybody gets in. If we have more people asking to attend that school as their first choice, then we need to create a waiting list. Priority is given to siblings of students already enrolled in that elementary school and who will be there again next year. So students who are this year in fifth grade will be in middle school, so that does not count as a sibling. After that, essentially what we do is we look at who lives closest to the school. I use Google Maps, walking directions, door to door. And if necessary, we will create a list based on who lives closest and who lives furthest from the school. Those who live closer have a better chance of getting in than those who live further away once we place the siblings. There is a slight difference for our two magnet schools, the Integrated Arts Academy and Sustainability Academy. Those two schools were created by the school board around 12, 13 years ago with the expressed direction of creating two schools where there is a balance in those schools based on who qualifies for free and reduced lunch and a balance of families' education. Registration is done on our website. There is no paper registration. There are lots of ways that you can access this from a tablet, from a desktop, from a laptop computer. If you do not have access to any of those, please contact either the main office or contact the school that you think at this point you would like your student to enroll in, and we will figure out a solution for you. In a nutshell, if you're new to the district and your incoming kindergartner is not already enrolled in one of our pre-K programs or partner programs, you go to the district website, students and families, school registration, and click on the link that says register a student new to BSD. If your child already is enrolled in a pre-K program, you need to go into your PowerSchool account and complete the forms labeled pre-K registration for kindergarten. Start with the first form and follow the steps as prompted. Normally when we do this live, we would take questions throughout and of course leave plenty of time for questions at the end. Unfortunately, there's no way to do that with a recorded presentation. 
That being said, we do have an FAQ page that we'll keep adding to as we get more questions. We have recorded virtual Welcome to Kindergarten Town Halls from each individual school. We also have links to all our schools and please feel free to contact those schools should you have any questions about each individual school's program or just about kindergarten in general, as well as registration. There are a few other numbers we've added as well. The after school number for Mandy Harris and then Ashley Daniels from the Early Education Office who can help you if you already have a student in pre-K and you have questions about the registration process for getting them into kindergarten, particularly if you're receiving or your child is receiving special education services at this time. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you listening and can't wait to see you in the fall.